Hello and welcome to this Gene Marker HID webinar. My name is Sarah Copeland and today I'll be giving an introduction to Gene Marker HID. Gene Marker HID is an expert system for forensic profiling of human STR samples. In addition to automated size and allele calling, Gene Marker HID has built in relationship testing and kinship analysis applications, database search tools, manual and automated pedigree construction, paternity trio analysis for paternity index and probability of paternity, as well as cell line authentication. GeneMarker HID is equipped with a mixture analysis application and also has an integrated user management system with built-in audit trail and customizable access rights. GeneMarker HID is compatible with all major CE instruments and file types and supports all major human identification chemistries as well as custom chemistries. GeneMarker HID is compatible with Windows 8 and 10. I'd now like to demonstrate the typical GeneMarker HID workflow for single source samples. First though, I'll show you the features of user management, which can be accessed by going to Help, User Management. Under the User Management tab, we can see a list of user accounts, and by clicking the History tab, we can see a history of user login attempts. To the right, you can add a new user or modify user access rights. These rights limit what a user can and cannot do when using the program. You can add an organization name. And finally, clicking the Run User Protection box will require users to validate themselves with their username and passwords before they are able to enter the program. To import your raw data files, navigate to File, Open Data. Click Add and navigate to your sample files. Select your traces and then click Open and OK. We can now see that the raw data has been successfully uploaded. Sample files are organized in a file tree to the left. You may notice that my ladder samples are displayed in blue font. This is because in the View Preferences window under the Forensics tab, I have made ladder my ladder identifier. Thus, samples with the word ladder in the file name will be labeled as allelic ladder samples. You can also set the file type manually by simply right-clicking on a file and selecting Set Sample Type. To zoom in on the sample trace, draw a box from left to right. Scroll by holding the right mouse key and dragging the mouse left or right. Finally, zoom out by drawing a box from right to left. To show an additional trace, simply double-click on the file name. Double-click again to hide it. To scroll through the die colors, click on the die color icon, or view all colors simultaneously by clicking on the Browse by All Colors icon. To process your data, click the green triangle icon in the upper left, or go to Project, Run. This opens the three-page run wizard. In the first page, select your genotyping panel, size standard, and standard color, or simply select a pre-saved template. Your validation team can easily make templates for your laboratory's SOPs or delete any unneeded templates from the list. Click Next. The second page has a variety of parameters that correct CE artifacts and govern how size and allele calls are made. Marker-specific settings can be accessed through the Panel Editor tool, which I will demonstrate shortly. The default settings are compatible with most analyses, so I will simply click Next. In the last page of the Run Wizard, you can manually select your allelic ladder sample or select Auto Select Best Ladder. With this option selected, the program will automatically identify the best ladder for each sample. This is particularly useful when using multiple ladders. Check the Auto Panel Adjustment box to have the program automatically align the genotyping panel with your ladder sample. From this alignment, the program will create a new shifted project panel. There are also sections where you can designate positive control templates, adjust the settings for how alleles are scored, and enable options for mixture evaluation or the use of quality sensors. We go into more detail about these options in separate webinars, which we encourage you to watch. When you have made your selections, click OK.
we can see that size calling was successful from the green icons to the left of each trace. The yellow icon indicates there are potential problems with the linear migration, and red icons indicate that size calibration for the sample failed. To visually review size calls, click the size calibration icon. This window allows you to verify size calls at a glance. Here, for example, we can confirm that the pattern for each sample is very linear, as expected. We can also see that each ladder sample is now in bold. This indicates that the ladders passed and were used to create a new project panel, which was aligned to each ladder. Because I have two ladders, two project panels were made. Furthermore, the software compares each passing ladder with each sample and selects the ladder that best matches the migration pattern. We can see which of these project panels were used to make allele calls by simply noticing the reference ladder label in each sample name. For example, this sample used reference ladder 3, while this one used reference ladder 1. Allele calls are summarized in the report table to the right, and a similar color scheme is used. A green icon means the peak passed all analysis parameters. A yellow icon means the peak is in the check range for at least one parameter, and a red icon means the peak failed at least one analysis parameter. Table navigation is linked to the electropherogram. Simply double-click on an allele call to be taken to the corresponding peak. This aids tremendously in investigating flagged allele calls. For example, I see that this peak has been flagged yellow. By hovering over the peak, you can see the abbreviation for the quality reason. Or you can pull up more information about the peak by clicking the Show Chart Table icon. Here, among other details, I can see that the quality status is check and that the quality reason is IMB, or heterozygous imbalance. Peak quality reasons are given in the upper right under the Help menu. We can see from the flagging on the peak and from the height ratio in the table that the smaller peak is 57% the height of the larger peak. To get a better understanding of why this peak was flagged, we can navigate to the Panel Editor, which is under Tools, Panel Editor. Our list of panels is given in the file tree to the left, with our project panels at the top. Note that I have my original identifier panel and two project panels, which have been aligned to each ladder. The electropherogram is in the center, with information about the selected panel detailed in the chart below. To access marker-specific settings, simply right-click on a marker. My flagged peak was in D8S1179, so I'll edit that marker. Simply right-click on the marker and select Edit Marker. Here I can set the minimum acceptable homozygote and heterozygote peak intensities, and set the stochastic range for each as well. Below, you can also set the inconclusive range for heterozygous imbalance. In this case, if the smaller peak is between 20% and 60% the height of the larger peak, it'll be flagged. Peaks lower than 20% won't be called, and peaks higher than 60% won't be flagged. We can now see our sample peak was 57% and thus was flagged. Just as an example, if this value were set at 55, we can see that the peak is no longer flagged. As another example, I'll select this peak, which has a red allele call. I can see the quality reasons are IMB, SD, and PL, which stands for heterozygote imbalance, saturation detection, and ploidy. Because of the quality reasons, as well as the size and shape of this peak, I suspect that it might be a result of spectral overlap. To check this, I will take advantage of the All Color browser. Zooming in on the peak, I can see it does indeed share its location with a very high saturated green peak. Thus I feel confident that this is not a real peak and that it is just the result of spectral overlap. To delete it, I can right click on it and simply select delete. Note that even though I've deleted the peak, GeneMarker HID's running audit trail still notes its presence and notes that it was deleted. If necessary, I can undelete it by right clicking on it and selecting undelete. Now let's go back to the Run Wizard and select Saturation Repair.
Now you can see that the bleed through peak is much lower and no longer called. This setting can save lots of time by decreasing analyst intervention, but is only appropriate for single source samples. Now I'd like to show another data set. This time I'll bring in some PowerPlex Fusion data and run the analysis using default settings again. There's a red SQ to the left of one of the sample names. When selected, you can see a similar red SQ to the left of the electropharogram. By hovering over the SQ, the program gives the possible reasons for the flag. ILS peaks are missing or have a size shift of greater than or equal to 0.2 base pairs. Let's take a look at the ILS in the size calibration window. You'll notice that all of the peaks are being detected, but the higher molecular weight peaks have asymmetric morphology that triggered the SQ flag. If we go back to the data, you'll see that the allele calls are correct. It's just that the higher molecular weight peaks have lower scores and higher values for FWHM, full width at half maximum. All of this information alerts the lab to the declining quality of the capillary. Now, after all allele flags are addressed, you can move on to genotyping applications. GeneMarker HID offers applications for paternity testing and pedigree construction, database searching, kinship analysis, cell line authentication, and mixture analysis. Each of these topics is the subject of its own webinar, which we encourage you to watch. For now, I'd like to show you the CODIS export application. Here you can enter the source and destination IDs, who submitted the sample, the kit that was used, as well as a category for each sample. Then simply press OK to save a CODIS compatible .cmf file. To customize a report, click on the report settings icon here. The report can be saved as an Excel or text file by clicking on the save icon. If you're interested in creating a print report, you can do so by clicking on the printer icon in the upper left hand corner. This opens the Print Report Settings window, which allows you to decide which samples, dyes, and other options you would like to include in the report. As you can see here, the Print Report contains the electropharogram, allele table, and an informative header with the project name, software, and template. User management can also be integrated into the header to include the user account, organization name, and horizontal logo image. These reports can be saved as PNG images or printed directly. Thank you for watching this GeneMarker HID introductory webinar. For more information or for a free 30-day trial of GeneMarker HID or other soft genetics products, please visit www.softgenetics.com or email info at softgenetics.com. For technical support questions, please write to tech underscore support at softgenetics.com. Thank you for watching.